Okay, so here we are. And my self-imposed retreat. This backdrop here has a view of what I call the Himalayan mountain range proper. You can see the snow-capped peaks towering above. And where I am, the altitude here is about 1,645, I think it said, above sea level. Now, um, Ben Nevis, to give you some sort of perspective, is 1,350 um, metres above sea level. And there are loads of little towns scattered around here, little villages. Um, it's absolutely stunning. It's like... It's like springtime. There's the blossom out. You can see the, you can see the um, the, the eagles circling, um, and I have not seen in these villages that I've stopped at and chatted with the old men with the henna dyed hair, or kind of chatted, just be present with them, drinking chai, the milk in. It's so difficult to explain veganism to people, but they're friendly. Um, it's peaceful. It's like a million miles away from many other sides of, of India. And the Himalayan foothills go on for about, about 200 miles, 150, 200 miles. So you get to the really high peaks, and over to the Chinese and Nepali borders and so on. Um, so <laughs> what we've got in this video, um, I'm going to try to introduce it without any notes. Bits of Rishikesh. There's an arty at Rishikesh. Um, I went to one of the most prominent, biggest um, uh, ashrams uh, called uh, Parnath Nipitam. Uh, and an American guru was there. It's interesting. I went to a, a, a meditation session and a question and answer, and she's revered and idolized. And she walked out. I, I, people were just putting their hands to her like that she very slowly edged out backwards and I, I couldn't really engage in that reverence towards her it was interesting I felt equal reverence towards the entire universe there can be many contradictions can't there in religion what is it Ram Das said who we might idolize he said God and the devil walk, we were walking along and God picked up something shiny and said oh look there's truth <laughs> And the devil said, great, give it here, I'll organise it. Food for thought. What does that mean? Well, so I have been to Rishikesh and I planned uh, this journey after I've been there for about a week or so, just talking to people at roadside stalls, developing some friendships, international friendships. Uh, I decided to go on a journey up to the Prayag uh, and then beyond, maybe beyond on my little rickety scooter along the winding roads. And Deb Prayag was, uh, was quite something. I had a little bit of an accident at Deb Prayag. Uh, I was hit by a car. Gotta be careful. It wasn't, wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. But about 10 people jumped up and tried to rescue me. I was fine. A few grazes, grazes. My, my scooter just went like that. The road just, the car just pulled out in front of me. Um, onto me, actually, hit me on the side. And it, it was after dark then, I was desperately trying to find somewhere to stay. I, I hadn't planned anywhere uh, because I had planned somewhere which was way up in the hills before uh, be before um, Deb Prayag uh, and I, I really couldn't find it. I rang them, they spoke no English and I eventually gave up because it was getting dark. I went down these narrow winding roads again. Um, gosh, I don't know why, there, there's so many things that happen, I've been writing a diary, I've been writing a diary. So, um, the, um, the prayer was absolutely wonderful, beautiful, all these, here, these, these, these houses on 45 degree slopes, these serpentine streets, um, 45 degree steps squeezed in between the houses and lots of temples, especially the Shiva, Shiva is the god of Ganges, that's the most temples, then you're a Shiva. You remember this, there's a, uh, you might remember, you might know, that Hinduism had a trinity and a whole pantheon of other gods, very confusing stories that often contradict each other depending on where you are originally. Um, and uh, what names you give to the gods, but the trinity is, is uh, Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu, Shiva the destroyer, Brahma the creator, and Vishnu the wizard. 
Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, now I went to the, 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 um, the Gat, the crowd where people go and worship and they cleanse themselves with the Alakananda River Karate. They meet the Alakananda, it's a very slow river meeting, the very excitable sort of juggling river in this extreme deep, um, vivacious rapids. They meet the two, and then the Gat where people bathe in this little chained sort of chains really for people to hold on to so they don't get swept away. There's even two women there who are in a rapture to to, to the drums being played there. There's quite a few sadhus as ever but they're all Indian. Uh, I met a chap and you'll see later on um, in a square who was said he was 45 and looked 70 and he, he was given some money to some reporter children uh, to go and get some biscuits. Uh, yeah, uh, he was um, yeah apparently going back down from uh, up the river where he worked at uh, chemists with his brother who was a pharmacist. He says his life is a spiritual life and pharmacy and is very interested in English literature. When he found out I was an English teacher, he kept saying me names of, of of different famous authors like Wordsworth and uh, William Shakespeare, uh, Percy Shelley. Quoting Macbeth. Um, our, our conversation was limited, but we, you know, we, we enjoyed each other's presence. And then the journey to this place was very difficult. Google Maps lied. I went the wrong way, added an hour onto my journey, I had to go back again along a road that was mainly covered in cement dust, it was like this post apartment. Oh, there we go, the, the dogs are off. The dogs do this, and basically, they sense there's a dog up that hill over there, and they bark at it. No dog fights, no, never any fights. That's Coco over there. Um, so, um, yeah, it took a long time to get here, but I've been here, so I've had three nights here absolutely beautiful so if i just turn this around you can see the view the other way there we are all the way around here it's utterly stunning and incredibly quiet and peaceful so without further ado this is quite a short one this wasn't it here's the edited footage of rishikesh and here on the mountainside. <laughs> Parties can be very different along the Ganga. Haritwar was full of tourists, very, very busy, everyone Indian. Here, quite a few that aren't Indian, and there's almost like a sermon, like a, a lecture uh, by the, the one, one of the main gurus here, this, this American lady. We invite you to join us for our evening satsang, a sacred deep dive into truth through spiritual questions and answers.
the next morning I had breakfast with these three. I can remember the names of two of them. <clears throat> there was uh, Amit, who's closest to me there, who was very friendly, doesn't carry a phone, and talks way too fast. And then there was Iwan over there, who just walks everywhere, um, to stays at ashrams up in the hills with his didgeridoo, his bamboo didgeridoo. These guys are normally hanging around. Yeah. I mean, you know these wildlife programs. It's normally about survival, eating, and reproduction. Isn't it? Survival, eating, reproduction. And to basically bonds that these groups have between each other. That's about all of that as well. Hmm. The lion's wobbling. There he is. We're getting closer, scrounging. This is north of Rishikesh. In two days' time, there's Mahajivrati, which is the celebration of the wedding, the anniversary of Shiva and Parvati, or also known as Shivani. Now, right into Rishikesh there, it's incredibly busy. There's loads of them. There's loads of them like this. It's the conversion, a conversion of a truck. There's quite a few of these. There's a platform in there. Lots of people sleep on there. They've got sound systems on them and all sorts to celebrate the wedding, the anniversary. It's a big deal. Uh, I'm not sure what date they got married, uh, but better, better look that one up. This is where I've got a gig soon from this Shambhala Cafe. So this what's this? I'm swinging it's, it's everywhere a you go. This used to be Hanuman, Han Han used, used to be Hanuman's way of Of course, this is all folkloric. Hanuman is the servant to of Ram, the monkey god. Very, very popular. This is Mahasi Marathi. It reminds you of being in a festival late at night and wandering into something else. Oh, look, there's something else. What's in there? I'm off my head. I need to quickly explain that a, a lingam or a Shiva lingam is, is phallic and what's underneath it is the yoni, the vaginal, I suppose, and it's supposed to, as ever, represent the universe. Uh, you're supposed to worship it, you're supposed to put things on the Shiva Lingam. Um, I can't go into much more detail than that. It's Saturday the 9th of March, the day after Shivrati, where they ce celebrate here and other places on the Ganga, the marriage, the anniversary of Shiva and Pavati, also, also known as uh, Shivani or Shivati, uh, many names. Um, and um, yeah, they all gathered there. Today is my expedition, my four day expedition on a scooter, not a, not a Royal Enfield, just a scooter. Royal Enfield is the iconic bike of India. It used to be made in Britain, British bikes until 1971. Uh, but I'm going to go off to the hills. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Dev Prayag, 
which is where the two rivers converge. Uh, that's uh, Bagarati and Alakananda River. The name of the Ganga. So this is the this is the first bridge I crossed to go over to the other side. Can't see it quite so well because we've got this. It's beautifully lit up at light night by these things here. Sort of blue lights. And so up I go into the hills. These are the foothill hills of the Himalayas, which go on for about 100 to 200 miles or something like that. So it's where it just starts. This is where it starts, the hills start. I'm going a little bit up the Ganga now. The next town is Shivpuri. And that is where you get the five in one combo. You get bungee jumping, some rock climbing, I think it's rock wall, giant swing, look at that. Sky rolling, sky roller. Uh, or you could ride a bike across a tightrope and a big zip line, 70 pounds. Well, when I return, I'm not sure. I might, I might explore this side of things just for the sake of 70 quid though. Well, you know, that kind of thing is going to be much more expensive in the Western world. There's always white people. Oh, yeah, it's tempting. Rafting as well, rafting. So it's a big spiritual side to things. And then there's this. Yeah, as I approach the quarry, there are, there you can see huge structures that are like, um, the, the, yeah, bungee jumping platforms. Mm. Now, yeah, that's Chip Puri. Basically, some adrenaline junkie platforms nestled in the hills. Just above the Ganga. But I'm halfway between Rishikesh and Dev Prayag, which of course is where the two rivers meet to become the, the Ganges. Um, this is Muller Kunti Bridge. Yes, very funny, yes. But it's, uh, but it just seems to lead over to a luxury beach resort over there. However, there is, there is a small one track road, which looks very um, travelable uh, by, uh, by car, uh, but um, how to get over there, I'm not sure. Now in theory, I guess, Scooter can go over this bridge, but we tend to do it, maybe on the way back, I don't know. So there are so many things to explore, so many different routes, so many choices, so many quantum possibilities, aren't there? Do this, do that, like an adventure game book. I guess adventure game books were just there, really, uh, the safe way of just practicing possibilities. That's a new, new very spicy club. Over the other side, here's another little temple by the Ganga. There's images of Shiva and Shakti, or Bhavati, and their son, Ganesha. It's a bit of a, bit of a squeeze around this one here. Lots of landslides. I guess that's during the monsoon season. The minute it dries off, monkeys running around. Park mules around here. Here I am. Another shooter on the Ganges. I don't know what this is called. It's an absolutely stunning view. I stopped off at this roadside cafe for a drink and they're looking after my bag. I said I'll be an hour. It'll be there when I get up there. Most people are trustworthy, the vast majority. Let's see on that beach. And that's where that I'm going to call it. But in my journey.
And things are ineffable, it, it means that you're awestruck. Human beings didn't make this. It's the forces of nature. And, and this is where the connection with the sublime and the divine is where it happens, where it meets our divine within. I'm most of the way to Dev Freya and the, the landscape is so dynamic, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And of course it gets more and more extreme. Down there, somewhere, is the Ganga. I can't believe that I'm riding this. I, I just can't stop stopping. It's just, um, this is me on my way to a homestay somewhere. Well, I'm trying to find it. It's a pretty narrow road. And I've just seen some people from the village getting water from a water pump. A pump. So, um, I'm getting a bit off the beaten track. The tourist trail, finally. <laughs> well, it's rush hour and I'm nearly at my hotel. Three minutes away. Hotel, guest house. It's gonna be very rough and ready. And I think maybe communications m may just be through gestures. Who knows? Who knows? But, um, oh, no words, are there? No words. Right, well, I'm at a hotel that I arrived at pretty late at night because something went wrong yesterday. I went all the way up that hill. Uh, oh, yes, and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and the map took me to nowhere. But I had a phone signal, so I rang them. And they only spoke Hindi. And I don't speak enough Hindi. What, about three or four words or something like that? So, um, yeah, it didn't really work out. And it just, it just didn't happen. So I went back down and, and followed the road to Dev Praya. Called at three different hotels. They're all full, apart from this one, uh, which is quite basic. I'm going to show you a little video of what's inside there. Um, on the way as well, I was hit by a car. So you've got to be really careful. It definitely wasn't my fault. There's no way it was my fault, of course. But um, still, you've got to be careful for other people. Um, and I, I just got knocked over and my bike fell on top of me, my wing mirror fell off. Um, I was wearing my helmet and um, yeah, I just got some grazed, knee, grazed knees, I was lucky. So this is Dev Prayer, the, this is a view over, that is still technically the Ganga. That over there is the Alakananda River. Uh, uh, that one, that way, there is Bagarati. So which way am I going to go? And there are three different roads as well. Bagarati, Alakananda, or that one away from the Alakananda. 
Uh, I've got some idea as to where to go. Um, but it's, yeah, basically I've got to make sure I don't press on too late really. Maybe try to arrive before night nightfall. I didn't this time. So uh, off I go and we'll see what I decide to do. This is it, this is the convergence. I think I'm gonna get, get down there. It looks like there is a public school next to it. There's obviously a gap down there. Relatively popular, I'm curious. Alekananda. Bagarati. There's the convergence. Central Sanskrit University. You see, I'm possibly the only person that's not Indian here. It's interesting, isn't it? I always find it fascinating by somewhere beautiful like this is always normalised to some people. It's just normal. It's completely normal. But I guess London one might be exotic to them. I don't know. Travelling for you. That's the Ganga we can see there. Down there. Can't see it actually. Down there is Alakadanda. Over there is Bagarati. Jay Sri Ram. In all probability, chains are up these steps because the water level is so much higher during and after the monsoon season. People need to hold on to it because the current's strong. You may have noticed from the high up shot earlier on that where the rivers converge, they're two particularly right. different colours. It's as if they pick up different sediment and because they run at different speeds. 
This is the swastika, which you see everywhere. It's an auspicious symbol. Here's Ratuni who gave me a cup of tea. He lives with his mum. Wow, when he's down here, he does. So I've bathed in the convergence of the uh, Alakananda and uh, Bagrati well, River. Here's the view this is the uh, Alakananda. I'm following this house, for a little bit. His house. Before I he's left uh, the Prayag, which I did do just about 20 minutes ago, I was sitting in what you might call a kind of square um, with a chap called uh, Ratuli. Um, he did ask me at my age and I told him, so I thought I'd ask him his. He said he was 45. Honestly, in my terms, he looked 70. Um, he says he's a pretty much a fruitarian, uh, but he, he, he does do milk um, and he smokes uh, bidis, which are tiny little cigarettes, uh, um, sort of uh, Indian ones. Um, so, um, yeah, I was chatting with him for quite a while. And now I've, I've found what looks like an interesting hotel on booking.com, but I've not booked it. It says there are a few places left, actually. Um, no, actually, no. There's one on booking.com and then there's one near it, which isn't on booking.com. I'm going to go to that instead. It looks cheaper. And if that's not available, we're going to go to another one. So I'm going to actually follow this side of the Alakananda River for a short amount of time and then turn off again into other valleys. But this is, is the road. Um, this is like a wider bit of the road. There we are. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's my, my scooter. Or scooties, they call them here. It's, uh, yeah, a little bit precarious, really. That there is the main road on the other side of the Alakananda Valley. I am on the road less travelled. Up this way or this way? This way. And up and up and up. I'm not 100% sure about this path down here or this road. It says go down that way. My suspicions about the unsuitability of the road were completely founded. Uh, I, I got as far as I could go and a, a lady in a sari, an old lady in a sari, of course, uh, went, no, 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 go around. No, can't, no. Don't trust Google Maps. So that's the quickest route you could take. Honestly, it was really, really precarious. In fact, there was, a, there was a digger in the way anyway. I could see in the distance, but it was getting worse and worse and worse. No, definitely not navigable. So I'm going the longer way around where a lot of cars seem to go, be going taxis and stuff like that. All Indian tourists. And this here, by the way, right by the Ganga, is what's obviously a cement quarry. Uh, there's, there, there's just cement dust everywhere, you know, getting in your eyes. Now, this new road I'm going down looks kind of post-apocalyptic. And you have a look at that, oh, there's dust everywhere. Cement dust, it seems. So a nice view, though. The road has suddenly improved. Take a look at that. Why? Well, there's a culprit that's just down there. Now, there is the quarry. So, there's loads of divots. There are a huge amount of divots, big holes, uh, potholes, dust everywhere it's, it can be slippy you can skid on the dry dust you can skid on the, the wet dust on the sort of cementy sort of mud but now it's improved so in theory I should get to one of the two places that I'm aiming to get to and trying two places um, well before sunset So I'm at BS, BSR Farms home, homestay um, and um, they, they said um, £2,400, uh, that's about £24 when I arrived. Nevertheless, on booking.com it said £1,500, about £15 plus, um, plus taxes. Now, that's really strange because I d didn't book on booking.com to save them money. 
But then they insisted that if I wanted to get the cheaper price, I book on booking.com, but they still have to pay the fees. So I'm paying it. So ultimately, with the taxes, this is £17 a night, uh, which is a lot more than I usually pay. But have a look at the view and have a look at the room. the foothills of the Himalayas. And I think, you know, it gets chilly here at night. So I think bamboo huts. Hey, but unusually, the first time I've seen this, there's a heater. And this bed is actually really comfy. So I'm doing two nights here in the quietude um, yeah, and it's uh, a bathroom. I'm yet to find out how well this uh, hot water heater works because normally we get tepid at best. It's almost like I'm starting to be treated in a VIP kind of way because they, they, they WhatsApp me the, the menu and the menu is a little bit more expensive, probably about 50% so 50% and 100% more expensive. But nevertheless, for, a, for a, a good meal, for a big meal, I guess you could pay about three pounds here. Yeah, about three pounds for a meal. So I'm doing that for two nights. I'm just gonna stay up here uh, amongst the freshness of the Himalayas. Now, India is so varied, isn't it? It really, really is. So yeah, I'm away from the, um, the Alakanand Alakananda and Bagrati or the Ganga. But nevertheless, it's just wow. Look, it's lovely dogs. Coming to say hello, I think. You having a nice conversation? Just wandering around the immediate vicinity, I found this very small, neglected little temple right adjacent to my hut. And that's me banging my head on the bells. Probably watch that fly it and see, uh, see what's happening there. Yeah. Look at the camera.
Here's a local village, 15 minutes away. Higher than Ben Nevis, much higher. And there's an engineering college. Not really much else there. So quiet. So quiet it makes I was filming that from a sort of raised viewpoint. Like and a guy was Check just lying on the bench repeatedly watching videos on his course, phone when you had that ama this amazing earlier. view. That's interesting, isn't it? This is a resort near me, which I think seems to be closed. Look, the auspicious symbol. Oh, I love derelict buildings, don't you? You see that? They're not clouds. Well, there's a tiny bit of cloud at the top. They are the peaks of the Himalayas proper. You know what I said about normalisation? People just going about their business. Because they wake up to this every morning. So some Indians up here doing this. Some Indians waking up to the congestion, the noise, the extremity of, say, Delhi. But that's the world, isn't it? That's the world. Hello. Don't know this one's name. It's the one with long hair called Coco. Well, that was it. I'm tucked up in bed early. It's only 9.30, but it's so cold and quiet outside. It is very nipply out there. And, I, and I've got my heater on. I've got my glasses on because I've just finished in editing it. So this is it. That That's the lot. I've, I've got nothing to expand upon apart from the fact that tomorrow it's supposed to be a three-hour ride back to Rishikesh. But um, it's going to be a lot longer, I think. A lot longer. Uh, I'm at a different hotel for two nights. I've got a gig. And uh, look at me waiting. I think I've got a gig. Because I always do that good gig, right? And um, a nicer hotel for two nights and then back to my really cheap one. Uh, £5.50 a night. Because I am on a shoestring. A tight budget. So I hope you enjoyed it. If anything confuses me, you, just just ask. Um, and I'm not the best of editors, but I think I'm all right at presenting. So if anyone wants to book me just for going around, speaking to people, being enthusiastic, you know, like James Clark or, or maybe more like Ben Fogel with great counselling skills. You know, why did you do this? Why did you choose to have a new life out in the wild? Mm, yes, um, I see. Mm, I understand. Mm -mm, nod. That kind of thing. But authentically, um, yeah, I'm your man. I'm your man. Somebody else do the editing. I'll come up with some ideas as we're travelling, but, you know, this is it. All I need is a bit of encouragement. <laughs>